You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. Blizzard is only slight. Blizzard is the only bright splash of color amidst the snow. After all, it's only to be expected when it ca that it catches my eye. That and the fact that he wears light clothing and what he and what he le and what he has leaves little to the imagination. I promise not to touch. I never said anything about looking. Just as naturally, my gaze goes to Lizard's tail, which is slowly swaying with each step, and it's something rather strange. Two long black lines run across his tail from the tip to the base. This could be his brand, of course, but the brand of Argon is a triangle pointing upwards, not just lines. I continue to follow the lines on Lizard's appendage before I set my eyes upon the base of his tail, and that's when I realized my mistake. That was indeed his brand, his very, very big brand. Across his back is a huge triangle, the base of which is at the level of his loins, and the top of which is lost behind the feathery decorations around his neck. Dozens of small lines grow through the shape, occasionally blending with the lines of Tenox scales. Damn! This brand is absolutely colossal! He's probably able to make some pretty incredible flames! As I scan the lines on his back that seem to turn orange, slightly glowing, a sign that their owner is activating his brand, suddenly a small flame flickers in the middle of the lizard's back. It then slowly ascends, guiding me to, guiding me to Tenox's head, which he has turned in my direction, a big smile on his lips. When our eyes meet, he gives me a playful wink. Fuck! He caught me watching! This day is truly fantastic through and through! I feel myself blushing as I look away, before I hear the laughter of the lizard in front of me. Hey, if I didn't want people to watch, I would be wearing this outfit. Well, at least he doesn't take it too badly. Let's see how far I can go with him. I was curious, that's all. I don't see a brand of this thickness every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure the thickness of my brand is the only thing that made you curious. He slows down to join me, matching his walking pace to mine while keeping a smile. Ooh, seems like someone's in a playful mood. Alright, let's play. I'm not one to turn down this kind of challenge. Really? We've only met and you're already attributing such thoughts to me? I, sh I assure you that nothing of the sort has crossed my mind. Well, usually you don't blush when, you've caught when you're caught staring at someone without an ulterior motive. Maybe I'm just very shy, who knows? I guarantee you that I'm all about chastity and purity, sir. There's a brief pause and we both burst out laughing. After the thing I've after the, after the tiring day I've had, it feels good to be able to relax a bit. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, dear sir. You are who are you are who are so pure. I'm Tenak, I know. Vakad told me. Name's Eloise. Who really? Forgive my curiosity, but what did Vakad say about me? If there's anything negative, I'm obliged to deny it vehemently. Truth be told, he didn't say much. He's not exactly the most uh, communicative anthracan I've come across. He told me you're from the Empire and that you're a nobleman or something like that, but that's about it, really. Tanak smiles even more while listening to me. I guess he's I guess he's glad the stag went easy on him. I'll keep the negative comments to myself for now. No need to bother Tanak with it. A nobleman? Hmm. I guess that's one way to look at it. Actually, I'm an ambassador of the Kazal Empire, what you commonly call the Empire, and I'm working in Frostfang at the moment. I've been here for mm, three years, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, an ambassador. Didn't know the Empire sent diplomats here. And to be honest, we don't send just any diplomat. Just one. Me. Most of the others refuse to come. It's too cold for their fragile little scales. I give him a brief, I give him a brief glance, judging his outfit. I still have no idea how he survives in his attire. At first I thought he was using his brand to warm up, but it's not currently active. How do you do that? I mean, it's freezing, you're really not wearing much. Curious, are we? I hope you don't expect me to tell you all my little secrets right from the start. I like a bit of mystery. It's okay to be curious, isn't it? Sure, but that doesn't mean I have to give you an answer. He chuckles, coolly amused by my frustration with his little guessing game. Alright then, keep your secrets. I found out eventually. So, you're here for the competition, I suppose. I heard that you are a singer, and that your companion is walking around with a lute. I'm not just here for the competition, I'm here to win it. Second y'all, water time. Alright, that water is complete. Ooh, so much confidence, I like that. But it might be more difficult than you think. I know a thing or two about it. Oh really? And what do you know exactly? Well, I'm on the jury, so I know pretty much everything. After all, my homeland is known for its love of the arts, so it makes sense for me to be judge to be a judge in such a competition. Oh, that's the first impression I give to someone who's going to judge one of the turning points in my life. Absolutely, totally perfect. This day is just getting better and better. 
I guess that makes sense? Yes, and let's be honest, the kings have shitty taste anyway. I pause for a brief moment, my eyes fixed on the lizard, who stops after a few steps giving me a confused look. I, I didn't expect that. I don't think I've ever heard someone criticize royalty so openly. Granted, the topic's trivial, but still. What? Don't give me that look, they're not perfect. I would even go so far as to say that they're allowed to have flaws. That's... it's not like I personally insulted them. I can't help it if they don't know anything about music. Eon only knows a few military marches, and body songs, and Lusk seems unable to relax and party even if his life depended on it. He talks about the two kings with such nonchalance that it's... strange. It sounds like he's just talking about two old friends of his. Do you know them? I mean, personally? Oh, of course I know them. I'm an ambassador, remember? My job is to talk to them daily. I see. I'm starting to wonder if Tenek is bullshitting me, or at least if he's not exaggerating reality. I'm the first to embellish my songs as well as my qualities, but you know... But you have to know when to stop. I hope that everything you've seen today will not have an influence on your opinion of me during the competition. And don't worry. I know how you say... I know how to stay impartial. Now, if you want to earn a few extra points, we can always work something out. He smiles at me with a look full of innuendo. In response, I imitate Vakad and roll my eyes. I prefer to win on my own merits. Contrary to some rumors, being cute isn't enough to make a bard fall in love with you. Really? Well, that's good to know in some ways. I, in some ways, I like that. What do you like? That I resist your charms? Well, at least you want to show your abilities without getting... without... without going the easy way, and that's more than I can say for the other competitors. I think I would have been a little disappointed if you had accepted my offer. He smiles politely after giving me the, after giving me what I think was a compliment. It looks like we're getting along pretty well so far. We continue walking through the snow, advancing towards the capital. Aket and Gillian have now joined us. The panther taking the lead in our little procession while the falcon comes to my side. He looks exhausted. I can't really blame him. I am too. At least he seems to have calmed down since our last conversation. He's just tired now. Hopefully this whole experience won't leave too much of a mark on him. Now, I have to admit that I really, I'm really, really curious about what happened between him and Gillian. I saved his life and reassured him after the attack. Doesn't he owe me that much? Doesn't he owe me the truth? So, do you feel better? Aket gives me a sideways glance, followed by a timid smile. He doesn't look entirely honest, but he looks better. I'll be fine. Eventually. I just need a little time. It's not really something I'm used to. I can only imagine. I'm sorry you had to go through that, and, and that I couldn't protect you. I should've... No, no, don't apologize. A at least uh, you tried to do something. He looks away. Great, Eloi. You were, the, you were there to reassure him and try to get some information, and you're making him feel even worse than before. Just think about something and fix this situation. Hey, don't worry about that. On the bright side, our little misadventure has given me some inspiration. I can sing about how I bravely saved the life of a poor, Maca a poor Macadian as he was attacked by some fearsome bandits. Maybe I should give your role to a female, though. Uh, damsel in distress stories usually work better. I hope you don't mind. I wink in his direction with a smile. It takes him a few seconds, but he eventually joins me. Much more timidly, though. Still win in my book. For a beautiful song, I'm willing to accept the sacrifice, I guess. I promise to write the most beautiful song. Or at least try to write it. Songwriting isn't exactly my specialty, but he doesn't need to know that right away. If you don't mind, though, can I ask you what you were talking about with Gillian? If you want to talk about it, of course. Second y'all, water time. Oh, uh, it's just that. He mistook me for something, I, for something I'm not. He lived in Makad for a while, and he thought I was someone else. That's it. Gillian doesn't look Makadian. It's weird. Well, obviously it's hard to say, say that when the panther is covered from head to toe in all that metal. But it's typically a very frosty in outfit. Just take it to the extreme. I never would have guessed. I suppose you got to talk a bit. Talk a bit to... Uh, talk a bit, uh... Talk a bit about Makad, then? Yeah, a little bit. We didn't live in the same region, and the kingdom is so big. So we don't have much in common. He sighs softly. As I'm about to speak to him again, I'm interrupted by Tenok, who comes to a halt in front of us, all proud of himself. Close your eyes. Again? Yes, again. I promise it's worth it. I just want you to see something the, the way it should be seen. Surprise, I raise my eyebrows. Almost in unison. Aket and I look at each other and shrug before turning back to Tenok. If you think it's worth it, then so be it. Got us to this wonderful thing that you want to show us so much. I close my eyes and hold my paw out in front of me. Quickly feeling Tenok's fingers around mine. Strange. Tenok's scales are really warm, as if he had just ar warmed them up by a fire. It's far from being unpleasant, but I can't understand how he does it. Reptiles usually have a really hard time retaining heat, so feeling one of them warm my paws feels unnatural. 
but don't have the time to dwell on that. Tanik starts pulling me behind him, and I have to concentrate on keeping my eyes closed. I'm a little afraid of tripping over something, and I've had my share of falls lately. After a few meters, we finally turn right, and I can feel the cold wind hitting my face. It feels like we've come out of the cover of the woods, which can only mean one thing. Gentlemen, you can open your eyes. Let me offer you the city of Frostfang. I open my eyes, and for a moment I'm dazzled by the light reflecting off the snow. I manage to see again. The first thing that appears before me is Tenok smiling, his arm outstretched just to better represent the view, and then behind him, Frostfang. The city covers the side of the huge mountain above it, the capital is surrounded by a wall of stone with several tall towers. The tops of most of these towers seem to be covered with a layer of ice, listening to the light of the setting sun like a beacon guiding travelers through the coming shadow. Several gates open Several gates open onto wide, densely populated roads. The main city gate, however, is easily noticeable, for, it's f for it is flanked by two huge statues, one depicting a bear, the other a tiger, both wearing finely crafted armor. This is how our kings, Lusk and Aeon, welcomed any visitor to the capital. From our position, we can also see some buildings that stand out of the rest, of the rest behind the walls. The closest to us is the Temple of the Twelve, recognizable by its large white needle topped by a twelve-pointed star, the symbol of the gods in our faith. I'd better keep its location in mind. When my brand finally appears, it'll be the priests who will teach me how to use it, after all. And finally, in the farthest point of the city, slightly overhanging the mountainside of the Royal Palace, from its position it dominates the city, silently watching over us. Now, I understand why Tenek wanted it to be a surprise. The view is absolutely stunning. Wow, that's... that's really beautiful! Aket doesn't say anything, but I'm sure he's just as impressed as I am. Tenek chuckles softly, obviously proud of himself for the effect his surprise had on us. Yes, yes, it's very nice. Can we move on now? The god's intervention pulls me out of the trance in which the sight of the city seemed to have plunged me in. Could you at least let us enjoy the moment? What a killjoy you are! You can spend your days having fun and not giving a shit about anything as much as you want, but that's not the case for everyone. I still have work to do. You really should learn to relax, you know. The god grunts and continues walking along the road. I guess the view loses its charm after a while, but honestly, I don't know how I could ever get tired of it. Thanks, Tanak. That's quite a show. <laughs> you should thank our people. You know how to build when you want to. I have to disagree with you on this one. I haven't traveled much, but that's one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen. Second, y'all. It is water time. There we go. A sense of patriotic pride runs through me. I'm unaware of the reputation. I am aware of the reputation of Frostians have in other countries. I know we come across as savages and barbarians most of the time. Receiving compliments like this is relatively rare, so I might as well enjoy it. Gillian. Okay, that's Gillian. I don't want to rush you, but Fakad has already taken a long lead. We should follow him. I look ahead, I can indeed see the shape of the stag moving away from us. Never looking back or worrying about whether we are following him. So we set off with a, light, with a lighter heart than before. The sight of the city and its proximity seems to have lifted my spirits as well as a cat's. While the perimeter wall looked big from a distance, I can see how gigantic it really is now that I'm in its shadow. I don't know who built it, but I'm trying to look at the top of one of the towers is enough to make me dizzy. However, this is not the only surprise Frostfang has in store for us. As I walk into the city, I can feel the ground warming up under my toes, as if it had been under the sun for hours. After two days with the paws in the snow, this feeling is more than welcome, but I can't help but let out a sigh of contentment. I hear a cat doing the same thing right next to me, obviously enjoying the warmth. The streets of the capital are very crowded, and I can see the representatives of almost every northern species walking around. Even though it's getting dark, there are dozens of people walking around or talking to each other. Speaking of darkness, I must ask Tenok or Gillian to guide us to the nearest inn. I have, to, I, hate to, I have to admit, I don't have the courage to wander the streets looking for a place to sleep. Um, Tenok? I don't want to bother you any more than necessary, but could you guide us to a cheap inn? You know, it's been a long day, and I really want to find a bed, even if it's full of ticks. Did you read the poster? The one we wrote for the competition? He looks at me, almost disappointed, and I have no idea why. Well, okay, I didn't read that poster, but I have two excellent excuses for that. The first is that it was Rhaegor who told me about the event, not a poster. The second is that I never learned to read. I never really needed to, since I've, since I've always been able to remember every song in my repertoire. Obviously, it's absolutely out of the question to let anyone know that. I turn to a kit, hoping he has an explanation for both of us. But he looks almost as lost as I do. Well, there's only one solution left. I have to ask for clarification. It's been a really long day. I almost got killed and I've had my paws in the snow for two days. Let's just say I forgot what you're talking about. Can you refresh my memory pretty please? Lizard rolls his eyes and sighs. 
All right, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tape if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.